Hi guys, this is Igor and today I'm just gonna do a quick video about uh, Bitcoin soft fork and hard fork and all the scaling issues and BIP 148 uh, and user activated soft fork and what it all means, all this gibberish. Uh, but before I get into it, uh, let's talk about Bitcoin itself and how it works. So if we think of um, Bitcoin as a network of trains, and let's say train is what moves money from A to B, so if I was to draw it, and please bear with me, this is like the first time I'm using this tool. Uh, this is just a simple sketch pad. Uh, so let's let's draw like a train lines. This is my train line, pretty ugly looking train line. And let, so this is, uh, let's say this is a network between A and B. And we've got a train. I don't know if they have train in the clip art. Let's have a look. Um, nah, they probably don't. Anyway, let, let me draw a basic train. So let's say this is my train. And train what moves money from A to B. And the train at the moment, if you think of blocks, it's one megabyte. So what that means oh and before I get into this let, let's say um, and let, let's talk about parties involved in the Bitcoin um, network so we've got miners so let me find picture <laughs> let's say they're whales uh, we've got miners they're big whales these are the guys, uh, if you think of a real scenario as trains, this would be your like translink, you know, the people who actually own train networks, um, the, the people who actually um, maintain the whole uh, network and make sure that money get from A to B. Then you've got your developers. So let me find developers. Let's pick a robot. So this would be developers. And these are the guys, if you think about trains, these would be like engineers. This is the people who actually, um, uh, who create those trains, who, who create upgrades for those trains, so who make sure that the train moves reliably. And then we've got the actual passengers, the, the consumers uh, of the network, people like us, who use Bitcoin uh, to transfer it. So, so I'm like, I would be the user, so let's pick this one. Oh, hang on, sorry. <laughs> I have to... Oh, why doesn't it let me drop? All oh, right, okay. Sorry, some technical issues. In fact, instead of whales, instead of whales, <laughs> let's use this guy. For, for a miner and let's use some other clip art for users and let's pick a cat <laughs> these will be the users so this is the pretty much three parties involved in the Bitcoin uh, network the people who um, are consumers of the network the passengers who travel on the train the engineers who make the train, so this will be like Bitcoin developers, the core team, and it will be miners, the ones that ensure, the ones that actually uh, ensure that train gets from A to B and it's the right train and they maintain the whole network and, and make sure there is no scam. And actually let's, let's think not about passengers, but le le let's hypothetically think that um, each transaction represents a bag of money. So let's draw like a bag of money. I don't know, <laughs> something like that. So this train can fit so many bags and the maximum it can fit is one megabyte and one bag would represent a transaction. So when a user wants to send money from A to B, he would put this bag in a train 
and the train will deliver it. Once it gets filled, it will get delivered to point B. And the maximum size of this train is one megabyte. And uh, users pay for the transactions, so they pay for, for this uh, bag of money to be transferred from A to B to the miners. And miners just ensure, so miners like TransLink in the train scenario, they ensure that money do get from A to B. So that's all nice and cool, but what happens now, there's a big congestion. So we've got too many trains now. And the, the amount of bags we can fit in this uh, train is just not that much. You know, that the, the carriage can only carry that much of that many of bags, you know. So, and the maximum size is one megabyte. And there's too many trains now. There's more and more users join the network. The more and more users want to send money from A to B. And um, we now get, have a congestion. And both engineers, the developers and miners, the, the train operators, they both um, came up with a solution to this congestion. And the solution was uh, different for both of them. And, it, and before we get into solutions, let's think about miners. Miners don't really want to improve this network because the more people want to use the network and the more congest congested there is, um, they can just raise the fees and they make money of those fees and um, the more congested the network is the more people are willing to pay premium price for their bag of money to be delivered faster so they could pay like premium just to deliver it and apparently now uh, every day Bitcoin generates like this this one million dollars of fees being generated every day on the Bitcoin network so miners don't really want to improve it a lot what they want and what they suggested is just adding another carriage just putting another carriage so it can fit just more of those bags um, and basically effectively making this two megabyte block so they can just fit more but the and then that will obviously uh, improve the network improve the congestion but what that means is that the train becomes much heavier and these um, these rail lines they cannot uh, support it so what needs to happen you need to fork and create a bigger tracks for this train because this new bigger train cannot travel on this line anymore so this is what's called a hard fork so they basically, in Bitcoin terms, they would take a copy of the code and they'll, they'll fork from the main network into this new improved network to be able to support that 2 megabyte block. Um, what that means is that the, the current train line will still be operational and the trains can still travel along this line, but the new bigger trains will have to go on this new network. Uh, and the users will have to choose which one they want to support, whether they want to put money on the old train with one carriage or they want to put money into this bigger train with two carriages. Um, so that's a solution for miners. Now, from engineers, from developers, <clears throat> what they've suggested, uh, and actually before I get into this, let's, let's say that um, this bag of money has got a big lock as well. <laughs> big heavy lock this, sorry about this attached to this bag which allows you to open this bag and let's say this this lock uh, takes up 10% of each bag so if you remove all the locks you'll free up some space in this carriage and this lock represents a signature so every transaction has got a signature which allows you to unlock this this bag of money, this transaction, which proves that you are the owner of this transaction, you and you're the one who wants to send it from A to B. So what um, uh, developers suggested is removing this lock from each bag, effectively reducing the size of the bag, so more, so you could still fit more bags into this carriage, 
and putting those locks into this extended bag somewhere here at the top and when you put all those locks into one extended bag in one place it makes it much smaller and the whole thing becomes more efficient so effectively they don't need this another carriage they, they're just trying to improve the existing carriage by just putting this upgrade onto it and the train can still travel along the same train line without any um, hard forks and this is what's called soft fork the other thing about soft fork and hard fork, hard fork is not backwards compatible. So the trains cannot, the older trains cannot travel on this new network. While with the soft fork, it's backwards compatible, so the trains can still, the old trains can still travel here, and the new ones will can stay, uh, can travel here, but the new ones will be just upgraded. And obviously because miners don't want this to happen, because they're making a lot of fees from this, they don't, they don't want to, uh, you know, make more transactions to fit into this carriage, because they all, they, that'll be, everything becomes faster, the people will pay less fees for, for transferring money from A to B, and basically it's not in their interest. The way the uh, Bitcoin network works, the Bitcoin protocol, is you have to have a 95% consensus. So 95% of miners will have to signal for SegWit, and this is the, so sorry, I didn't mention this, but SegWit is what segregated witness is what developers are proposing by removing the signature from the transaction and putting it on an extended block. Um, for the SegWit to succeed, to be actually implemented, 95% of miners have to agree, and a lot of miners don't agree. So now we, we are stuck in this um, debate, you know, like a lot of miners don't want to go, so they, 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 they prefer to have a bigger block, like another carriage. Uh, they want to do a hard fork, and hard fork would mean two coins will be created, so you won't have just Bitcoin, BTC, you'll probably have like BTU, Bitcoin Unlimited. Um, so you'll have two coins and the price will probably drop, but they will be able to put more more transactions and all that. So, um, so we basically got stuck and that's been going on for a long time now. And what? And there, there hasn't been any improvement. The, the developers don't want to uh, do a hard fork and the miners don't want to go with a SegWit. So what they've agreed to do is activate a user-activated soft fork. USF. So what will happen on the 1st of August 2017 the user activated software will come into effect and what that means is that it's not the miners who will have to decide on whether to implement SegWit or not it will be the users who will decide and if 51% of users decide to go with the SegWit the SegWit network, the SegWit protocol will take over and uh, we won't have two coins. However, if less than 51% of users will, will do that, uh, we will probably end up with two separate Bitcoins, two separate train lines. And um, that's bad. Like that's, in the in short term, it's bad because if you think of users, they all have to decide whether they want to go ahead with the old SegWit or they want to go with the new, um, um, sorry, the, the new SegWit or they keep going with this old uh, network. And, that, and that's kind of a problem, you know, because the price will probably go down. And that's approximately what happened with Ethereum back, back in September. They split into two coins, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, for those of you who don't know. And the Ethereum... Uh, guys thought that they'll, everybody will just switch to the new Ethereum and there they will never be a second coin, but that's not what happened. There was some of the original guys stayed on the, on the old framework and it kept operating and basically now we, we have two coins. So that's what's happening. So on the 1st of August, they'll, they'll activate the user-activated soft fork and for the, there'll be... Um, two-week period for all miners and nodes to upgrade 
using the SegWit and this is what BIP 148 is all about. BIP stands for uh, Bitcoin Improvement Proposal and it just happens to be its 148's proposal. So that BIP is what we'll uh, use activated so fork will activate. Uh, and so we will then have two weeks for the SegWit to, to, to activate and if within two weeks we don't get 51%, we'll end up with two coins most likely. Or everybody will, will just stay on the old one and the SegWit will become uh, a legacy and it will just drop and we'll just get uh, back to the... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get this two-carriage scenario. Um, so that's uh, kind of my take on it. So how can you protect yourself? So for you, do not lose any bitcoins. Do not keep your bitcoins on ex exchange. Please do not. If you keep your money on exchange, you don't own that bitcoin. The exchange owns it. It, it takes care of all your private keys and all your passwords. So essentially, they own the bitcoin and they just let you have it. So if anything happens, if, if we had get two bitcoins um, created, you may, you may end up losing all your bitcoins. So the best thing you can do is, so you, actually you've got three options. Option number one, you just sell your Bitcoin and you forget about this whole cryptocurrency and you get back to your uh, normal life. That's probably not the best option. Uh, option number two, you can sell your Bitcoin into Ethereum, Litecoin, Ethereum Classic, all those kind of top five coins and hope that um, they'll go up in price and the Bitcoin will, will fail and you'll be in good profit. And the third option is to just, you can just keep your Bitcoins and um, you can put it on a hardware wallet or Exodus in the worst case scenario if you can't get hold of hardware wallet because hardware wallets are getting harder and harder to get hold of nowadays. So before 1st of August, please get the hardware wallet or at least put it on Exodus wallet or one of those um, wallets, the desktop wallets that you install which which allows you to actually hold on to your private keys, the ones that, in this, this way you actually own the bitcoins, not the exchange, you own those bitcoins, so what do you, just do that and don't do any transactions two days before the 1st of August, so probably on like 30th of July or like 29th of July, just stop doing any transactions because if they take two days to process, you may end up losing that Bitcoin because network will get confused when this when the software gets activated. So just give it some time, let the dust settle, and then you'll end up either in the worst case scenario, you'll end up with double the coins you had. So you'll have this uh, legacy Bitcoin and you'll have this new BIP 148 coin. So you'll pretty much have like two bitcoins. They'll probably both uh, uh, won't be worth as much. So they won't be probably like three thousand dollars combined in the next month or so. But then later on, it will actually grow in price. Like you know, when Bitcoin, uh, eBay, and PayPal split, the now the combined value of PayPal and eBay are much more than what it was when they were combined. Same with Ethereum. When Ethereum split. Um, the combined value was, um, before they split, the, com the combined value was much lower than what it is now. So, But in the best case scenario, you'll just get uh, upgraded Bitcoin and the price will most likely, probably with 90% guarantee, will start shooting up high because uh, there won't be as much congestion anymore. People will be able to make transactions. There will be a very positive um uh, vibe, you know, so everybody will start buying bitcoins. So that's your third option, and that's what I'm sticking to. But please put it on the hardware wallet. Do not do any transactions during that period. So be, uh, after the first of August, just let the dust settle, and then and then we'll see what happens. So that's my take on it. Please leave comments uh, below uh, if something is not um, if something is not clear, and please like this video.